To those of you who know, I am a huge fan of Miss Jennifer Thomas. She is a multiple time guest on the channel, done a couple interviews with us here and she was more than happy to come back and sit down for you know a little under an hour and talk to me about what's going on in her world so ladies and gentlemen this is my interview with jennifer thomas we are here with our guest this afternoon the uh the lady of the hour the goddess herself the queen of sessions ladies and gentlemen miss jennifer thomas has been good enough to join us welcome hi Pete. Is... thank you for having me today Absolutely. It's it's great to talk to you as always. And uh, I was joking around off air. I said I, I should go put some long sleeves on because I'm getting embarrassed over here. Um, but no, it's, uh, it's, it's always great to have you back. Um, I want to start out because I know we're crunched for time. I want to I want to hear um, how the last Women on Fire event went. I believe that was Chicago, right? With uh, was it um, was KO and Sheena? Or was that one in Vegas? Uh, actually, that was in Chicago. Okay. And that was, um, gosh, that was last, actually July. No, sorry, June. It was June. <laughs> okay. I'm telling you, yeah. time goes by so fast. Everything is a blur and I lose track of everything. But mm -hmm. yes, the Chicago event was in June and it was the best event yet. That's and awesome. I am just so looking forward to the next one because I definitely think that they're going to grow and get mm -hmm. bigger and better and even more exciting. So uh, it was an amazing event. And yes, yeah, Sheena and KO, they were the main event. And that was a very um, entertaining and great intense match. And it was definitely a great way to finish off the event and then go into the after party. So it was too bad that you were not there. I would have totally <sighs> hooked you up with a free ticket and everything. Uh, I, trust me. You don't live um, that far, right? You don't live that far from Chicago, do you? I'm only about four hours. I'm actually going to be in Las Vegas. Um in uh, October for about five or six days with uh, the wife and I are coming out for vacation. So I was like, I, I happen to know somebody who lives in Las Vegas, not only my co-host Tony, who I'll be spending some time with, but I happen to know this, this ass kicking uh, professional wrestler who lives in Las Vegas too. So oh, yeah. depending on her schedule, I might, uh, I might have to, uh, I would love to meet to... you in person along with your wife. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and, and I've been joking around with her about that, too. I'm like, you know, I was like, Jen and I have joked around about her kicking my ass. But I'm like, she's like, oh, make, make sure your wife's there. I'm like, oh, yeah, she'd love to see that. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> she'd probably sit back and be like, no, no, you don't. You, he's tapping out. It doesn't matter. Just 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 lay it in. People just lay it in more. It's fine. Yes. Yep. Yep. She's okay. like, no, I should be like, I didn't say no punches. He did. Go for it. Go for it. But she's um, a woman of no mercy. <laughs> That it's it's the German in her, I think. I don't know, uh, <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, though, so when is your next big event for Women on Fire? Well, it's funny you ask that. I actually don't have a date right now. Okay, I'm working on it, and believe it or not, we're working on Orlando, Florida. So if that right. happens, it's either going to be Vegas or Orlando, Florida. So mm -hmm. um, Vegas seems to be kind of like the headquarters, the home spot. But yeah. I do like to I do like to go to other cities because Chicago is actually the first city other than L.A. that I've been outside mm -hmm. of Chicago. Um, I just think it adds more opportunities to get more exposure with different, yeah. uh, you know, different places. And mm -hmm. um, there's an opportunity for Orlando. So if I can make that happen, I'll probably go there. Um, but okay. if for any reason doesn't work out, I'll probably stick to Vegas. Um, and I'm hoping maybe to have one before the end of year, if not okay. before the end of year, then early next year. Okay. Cause there's a lot of logistics and planning. A lot of people don't realize promoting an event like that, how much legwork actually goes into it and how many, uh, how many man hours it takes to, to put that all together with sponsors, venues, insurance, concessions, uh, you know, your vendors, your talent. It is, uh, but I'm sure you don't have a shortage of talent that are wanting to be on these events because you're bringing this industry more to the forefront and to the mainstream, which as somebody who's been a fan of it, I'm 42 and I've been a fan of this since I was literally about 10 years old. Um, you know, ever since you see those, ad well, I did see the ads for the old L Scott sales and stuff like that in the back of the uh, weightlifting magazines and wrestling magazines, you know, um, and, and you know, it's something like we, we've had this talk before. 
I've, I've been shamed for that my whole life for not only, you know, liking physically fit women, but being into like the whole like mixed wrestling thing and just, I just, it, it's, it's fascinating. It really is. It's fascinating to me. And any chance I've had to like take in like a documentary or something about the industry done by somebody who's in it is something that I'll watch probably a couple times just because to catch all the info, because it is, it, it's a, it's a very, it's a very complex and fascinating industry, and I, I really appreciate what you're doing as, you know, not only a performer, but a promoter uh, to bring that in. And it, it is, it's, it's, it's really cool. And we were talking about wrestling because I said, I'm coming back to the ring uh, in September, yeah. only, only, ring only ring announcing because I'm not in fighting shape yet. Um, not yet. Well, I need. Great. It won't take you long to get there. All you got to do is run the ropes, do a few hip tosses, get body slammed, and you're on your way. F flattery will get you everywhere. Okay. <laughs> uh, so no, uh, it is. I, I just I, when I look at like the ring announcing thing, and I'm doing color commentary. That's I can pull that off. You know, no matter what. But it's like if I'm going to get in the ring. It's, I, I hold myself to a higher standard because I, I go to, you know, I worked indie shows for 10 years and you, you, you understand you were there, you see people. And it's like, I'm just like, you should look like a worker. You should look like a, act as if, you know, carry yourself. Your body is your brand. So why would you not want to put your best foot forward and make yourself more marketable is my stance on it. And to me, it's like, I'm not worried about getting out there and getting marketed. It's just, if I'm going to be in front of the crowd and this is coming off, I, I, I want to look like a wrestler, you know, and that's, that's the thing. You need to look the part. You need to act the part. You need to look mm -hmm. like you belong in that ring because yes. you're right. We can notice it as a worker. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe some people in the audience don't really realize it, but you can instantly yeah. see it. If you already are in the wrestling business, you could say, Oh wow. Okay. She, she knows what she's doing or he knows what mm -hmm. he's doing, but you could totally tell, the level of training um, somebody has literally within the first two minutes of a match, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and there's, I've, I've been out for five years. So there's a lot of ring rust there. Um, but I'm, it's just gonna be like, like you said, it's, it's like riding a bike, you know, you just kind of yeah. get in there and it, the first few bumps out of the way and your body gets kind of back into it. But uh, I don't want to talk about me. Let's talk. Yeah. About <laughs> um, so, so what, what else is going on in, in the world of Jennifer Thomas right now? Any more LFC events coming up that you're, uh, you're prepping for? Well, LFC, the Sturgis is going on right now, but the LFC wasn't okay. called uh, or booked. So I would have been in Sturgis if that would have happened. But um, it doesn't look like there's going to be another LFC event until October, I believe. So okay. um, I'm not sure. I haven't been notified or anything. And to mm -hmm. be honest, I've been like so focused on Women on Fire, so yeah. focused on Session Girls that, you mm -hmm. know, if LFC happens and I get an email, I'll go and do it and as a performer. Yeah. Um, but I haven't, I haven't really been totally involved or following them at the moment just because I'm so. Okay. Yeah. But I love the LFC. I think it's great. And a lot of the same talent that's part of Women on Fire is part of the LFC. You know, I, so. I notice I, I notice I see there's crossover on the roster, which mm -hmm. is which is cool because there's a level of familiarity for you. So you're are you already kind of know it's like, OK, so now are you doing for your women on fire events? I know you do uh, you do fans like sponsored matches, right? Is that what you're doing? Like fan input, obviously, um, through like sponsorship. Is that what is that what you're doing for some of the matches? Yes. So basically what happens is if you're a fan of one of the girls, and you would like to see them perform at the event, you can sponsor them a match and you could pay, um, you know, it's basically $150 per each girl. So, okay. um, so basically you pay for that match and then that helps the girl because I want all the girls because you got to listen to this. This is what, how amazing women on fire is as far as being a wrestling. Prom I'm trying to be more, how, how should I say this? I don't want to be just an event. I want to be a yeah. promotion, a wrestling promotion, mm -hmm. female ran wrestling promotion. And mm -hmm. the girls so far have been so supportive as far as flying out to the city where I'm having the event on their own yeah. dime and, and being a part of the show, um, basically at their own expense. So yeah. what I'm trying to do is get their matches sponsored. So they're not there for nothing. I, I mean, exactly. I really want to showcase their talent. And, mm -hmm. and they're there for a reason, and that's to entertain their fans. So yeah. uh, the sponsorships are pretty much 90% of the show. 
And okay. if, if for any reason, some of the girls, because there's a lot of girls that show up and I'm like, mm -hmm. Holy Moses, we're going to have to like, there's, there's so many matches that we have to have an after party and even have more matches during the after party. Yeah. Uh, so basically any, anybody that's not sponsored, I will, I will sponsor because I want everybody to shine. So, okay. um, so yeah, basically the show is ran by sponsors mostly. Mm -hmm. you, you are truly amazing. And that is absolutely wonderful as a promoter on your part to do that. As somebody who's done that, when I first started running my promotion back in 2009, uh, there was a lot of shows where I dug into my pocket after losing a thousand to fifteen hundred, and was like, "You drove four hours, you know. Here, here, here's twenty bucks. You know, here's fifty bucks for the car. You know, something like that." But yeah, so I, I understand that. That's and that's awesome that you're getting. Now, did you do well as far as sponsors go for the last show? You did well. For most part, yeah, I did really well. You know, okay. because what's so great is that this is a worldwide fan base here. You know, and yeah. there's girls traveling in from different countries. And so as long as I keep the advertising going or just kind of prom mm -hmm. promoting the show, I know that, you know, I mean, it gets a little nerve wracking when it comes to like the last minute and I got seven matches that are still not sponsored, but they yeah. usually come, they usually come through. So, um, mm. I mean, pretty much this is a faith based, <laughs> a faith based yeah. promotion because you know, it, it is because I would not be able to dig out of my own pocket and to put on these events if it wasn't yeah. for the fans and if it wasn't for the girls doing what they're doing right now today. My goal mm -hmm. is to create a more of a following, um, to grow it more to where I'm not where I'm not dependent on that anymore. I will have that money. Yeah. To say, hey, I'm going to be paying for your travel to get over here. I'll take yep. care of Airbnb. I'll take care of whatever you need. That's my goal is to take care of everything, but I need, I need to grow it. I need to evolve. So right yeah. now, you know, it's, it's just being small, working your way up. It's, it's getting to that next level. And I, I do believe if anybody can do it, you can, because you have dedicated so much time to this industry and, and you're trying to give back now, you know, which is, freaking amazing it really is because you you don't get that a lot with people you know it's a lot of people are just takers you know they they, they mind what they can and then they move on you know that and especially in the wrestling industry that is very prevalent in the wrestling industry both professional and otherwise um and and i yeah i i want to i now next next the next show i'm gonna end up sponsoring a match i'm going to it's gonna happen um uh, you know I, I have a couple names off the top of my head that, you know, that, that I, I could think of, like one of them would be Rapture right off that, that one, that one comes, she, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Now you're flying in girls from all over. Now I saw you had, uh, was it Bianca Blance? Now she comes in from, is it Italy? the Czech? Italy? Oh, she's, okay. She's Italy. Mm -hmm. All right. And Sheena Bathory, she relocated to the U.S. now? Yeah. Is she, she's is she operating? She's in Vegas now. Oh, double trouble. You two are together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we no, have a lot of amazing I, women in Las Vegas. <laughs> I, 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 I notice that because I do. I go through I go through, and I look through Session Girls. I look for the new ones. And, you know, it's always like, okay, Vegas, Vegas. And I'm like, I'm always thinking in the back of my mind, I'm like, she's building up a, you know, you're, if your promotion is, you know, the home base is Las Vegas, you have a good solid core nucleus of talent right there to, yes. you know, for a foundation. For Correct. your company. Yeah. I feel very safe in Las Vegas. And I feel like mm -hmm. what better place than Las Vegas? I mean, it is kind of like the capital of sports entertainment. If you think about it yes. as far as UFC and boxing, you know, mm -hmm. and it's a worldwide tourist destination, you know. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like in my mind, there's no greater place than Las Vegas to have a, mm -hmm. um, a wrestling company, a wrestling promotion. Absolutely. You know, people are always looking for something to do in Vegas, too. And I mean, what what better <laughs> what better event to do than to go watch a bunch of beautiful ass kicking women in a promotion run by a beautiful ass kicking woman and that's trying to, you know, build something. And it, it's it is it's cool. And, and I'm not just saying this 
to, 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 you know, for your ego's benefit. I'm saying this because I mean it. I truly do. And, and it is. It's great to see this, you know, like I said, being in the wrestling business and, and such a fan of just, you know, professional wrestling for so long. It is good. And, and we were watching. We, we've done a lot of watch parties lately. And, you know, the women, we've, we've Pay attention to the women's matches, obviously. And uh, any thoughts on the current state of women's wrestling in, say, like AEW or WWE um, that you that you have? Hmm. Well, to be honest, I haven't really been following it so much, um, mm -hmm. but I do feel like it's e evolved, and I believe that yeah. the women that are there actually look like they belong there. They don't look like they've just been hired out of Hooters and thrown on into the ring like two weeks later. So I'm very, <laughs> I'm very proud of that. <laughs> you know, so no. there's, there's, been, there's been a lot of progress as far as the, as far as the development of women talent um, mm -hmm. with WWE and AEW. So, um, yeah. so yeah, I just wish that, you know, 15, 15 years ago, that was the case while when I was pursuing it. You know what I mean? Because I think I would have been able to be right in. You know, and, and that's the thing. And we've had that discussion too. And it's like, at that point, you know, like they they had so many athletic women from the fitness circuit that trained like, you know, like your uh, Lisa Marie Verone, Victoria, you know, the, a lot of women like that. And it was like, I, I, it always stuck in my craw because they always, you know, she had her runs with the belt, but it's like they made her job to so many. And Beth Phoenix, and you know, and AEW is, I don't watch it regularly because I'm always streaming or it's family stuff or things like that. I don't get to watch the replays. I watch the older 90s. I'm watching Nitro. I'm redoing, I'm, I'm going through and reviewing every episode of Nitro, every WCW pay-per-view, every episode of Thunder uh, for my channel right now. Um, from 95 to 01, and then I'm done. Because at that point to me, uh, professional wrestling in the mainstream was basically dead after Vince had consumed everything. And now with the, the Vince McMahon scandal too, by the way, I wanted to talk to you about that. Now, as somebody who, you know, you were in developmental, um, I, I, I look at it like this. This has been one of the biggest open secrets in professional wrestling is Vince's uh philandering shall we say now what was it 14 15 million dollars worth of payoffs that amounted to a non-reported accounting error which is why all this came to light um did, did any of this surprise you at all did any of this the way it went down not really <laughs> i mean i just feel like what goes around comes around you know and it's going to come back and yeah. bite you in the ass you know you're not going to get away with shady shit forever it's going to yeah. come back and get you no matter who yep. you are, no matter how much money you have, you know, yeah. it's just, it's, it's just going to come back. It's called karma. <laughs> I like that. That was a nice double entendre there. Mm -hmm. um, but no, yeah, it, it's time. Yeah. It bit him in the ass because enough people kissed his ass over the years. Um, you know, so yeah, it, it really, it was, it, it, it has, he he looks he looks really rough now, and it's like it happens now, you know. And I, I I'm not gonna lie, with Triple H taking over, I, I had uh, a little apprehension of what was. I mean, because let's let's face it, Triple H has had the golden shovel for about 20 years, and he's buried pretty much everybody that's worth burying. Um, you know, I mean, it was like his and Vince's single-handed mission to take everybody from WCW and shit on him basically is what they did you know and that's what it broke my heart to see sting go over to wwe um because i'm like he was the last man standing he was the holdout he never you know the main one of the main guys that never went over and then you know of course he gets injured by uh was it seth rollins with that uh horrible buckle bomb he does same thing he did to finn balor this is the guy that you banked on you know and he's not as i'm sorry he's not a safe worker he's I, I just look at it and it's like, I, I understand why you're where you are. I understand that. But it's like, you've injured so many people. It's like, why didn't one of the agents backstage be like, hey, maybe let's not do that buckle bomb anymore, you stupid bastard. Like, I, I just, it just blows my mind. And it's like, my thing when I got into the ring with somebody, and I'm sure you share the same sentiment, is this is a dance. You know, we're partners. We're going to both walk away at the end of this and be healthy, we're, but we're going to sell it to the crowd, you know, and that's the thing is like, I never did anything in the ring that I thought would put 
my opponent at risk because my God, you know, being a, uh, I'm already burdened with enough inner guilt as it is. I don't need to hurt anybody on top of that. So. Well, I know that I just taught recently a class uh, for Courtney Olson. I did a seminar, mm -hmm. a pro wrestling seminar, and that was one of my first, first rules in pro wrestling is to always keep your opponent safe. Yes. You know, and to always make your opponent look better than what they are. You know, mm -hmm. so instead of you always focusing on shining and taking the spotlight, work on that for your opponent because your opponent will do that for you. And now it's an equally shared spotlight match to where, yep. you know, yep. you're sharing the spotlight together, you're working together, you're keeping each other yep. safe. And in my mind, you're going to have a great match doing that. You know, mm -hmm. um, when you're trying to get your shit in all the time and trying to like, you know, do these crazy moves, you know, yep. then you're thinking really about yourself. And when you do that, you're putting your opponent at risk especially mm -hmm. when you don't have maybe that i don't know i don't know much about seth rollins i know he's up there on the roster but you know if you mm -hmm. don't have that natural athletic ability you know to pull off certain moves it even just becomes that much more dangerous you know so yeah. um so i think you know you have to be you have to be a real athlete i mean of course you've gone to wrestling classes but when I've gone yeah. to wrestling classes and I've seen people in that ring running the ropes, doing forward rolls, backward rolls, and doing the drills, I can already tell the people that are just not co coordinated. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now, can you? Oh, yeah. You know, so, um, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I just feel like as a promotion, as far as WWE, you need to. It, it, it's it's a very it's kind of superficial as we all know in a way you know there's like i said there's people that are there that don't really necessarily belong there like you said you have beth phoenix you got all these amazing strong powerhouse women and they're jobbing yeah they're jobbing yep. to women that don't belong there you need to put the beth phoenix against um you know uh natty nightheart now that's yes. you know what i'm saying like make it yep make it real <laughs> <laughs> exactly in an entertainment in an entertainment world you know make it believable that's, but that's when you right. got when you got beth phoenix i'm not i don't even know if this happened but if she's jobbing to kelly kelly back in the day you know that's not that's not realistic candace michelle All she right. jobbed so many times like i i was i remember i just sitting there on monday nights watching that just being like how like candace can't even she goes out and does her little twirl i'm like cool you're you're a beautiful woman nobody's saying otherwise but jesus god in heaven you do not belong in that squared circle it is sacrilege right <laughs> well, hey i i kind of find it to take it as a blessing because i watch these matches and i've been a part of those matches where i'm jobbing mm -hmm. and i'm like this makes no sense i'm 30 pounds yep. heavier i look like i work out she don't look like she does nothing she's a string bean you know, and then I, th I put that with women on fire. I'm like, well, I know what not to do for women on fire. Exactly. So, exactly. you know, let them be who they want to be. Let them run their yep. show the way they want to run their show. But, yeah. uh, you know, I'm going to be pretty much just the opposite. <laughs> and, <laughs> and that's why I'd rather watch your product. Like you have, yeah, you have athletes. You have, right. we have athletes beautiful athletes that yes. are out there kicking ass. You know, and that's, I mean, that's, it's, it's, it's female wrestling. That's what it should be. It should be a showcase for, you know, your, your, your athletes, not, you know, I mean, yeah, you'll have, you'll always, you know, you'll always have your models here and there, but I mean, the way you run your show. But you can put the models in the right place. You can yep, still you use the models when book I, them right. you know what I mean? So it's just, mm -hmm. you don't put them in the ring against somebody that has 10 years of training and that's you yeah. know like i said that's 20 pounds heavier you don't do that yep you know so um yeah so everybody's valuable everybody's mm -hmm. valuable no matter what their yeah. background is they're valuable you just need mm -hmm. to put them in the right part of the show i have the sexy nurse you know the sexy nurse sits at the ringside you know and and whatever <laughs> so she's not necessarily a wrestler but she wants to be a part of the show and yeah. I'm allowing the sexy, beautiful bodybuilder be a sexy nurse. So Who's everybody gets a chance. Who's your nurse, by the way? Well, this last show it was Candy Legs. In fact, I think she was the nurse for the. Oh, she was the bell ringer. She was the okay. bell ringer for the big show, and she was the sexy nurse for the Chicago show. You know, okay. so mm -hmm. um, you know, so 
you know, everybody has a role. It's like a movie. We'll, we'll just put you in the right spot, you yep. know? Absolutely. And that's, and that is, that's, it's excellent. It, it really is. It's so, it's so cool. Like I do, I want to come to a show. I, I do. I, I would really love do. for you to attend. I, so I do. I want to, um, it's like I said, um, it's just when, when, when I can, when I can, I am going to, and it, <laughs> and I do, I want to cover it for the channel and I would like to cross promote with you, uh, in any way I can to help out, um, just because I believe in what you're doing. And like I said, being a fan and, you know, a, 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 I consider you a friend, you know, we've, we've, I've, you know, at least yeah, on my end absolutely. anyway, um, so yeah, I, I, any way I can help. Like I said, your info is always in the link to every video I put out. Every video, every live stream, it's always right. in the description. Um, we, we it you. stays there permanently. No, you're you're welcome. Like I said, it's uh, it's my pleasure. Um, so now you you're, you're building your roster. You've got the promotion going. You're you're working on an. Uh, you said Orlando, right? Mm -hmm. Orlando, Orla Florida. Yes. And what's great about the the events too is that. The, the roster always changes because there's always different yes. girls coming in and out. Mm -hmm. So you, you'll you see some new girls coming in, like Courtney Olson. She wasn't part of any of the other events. She was part of Chicago, you know. Yeah. Um, so you're always going to see a different different roster for each city. Um, mm -hmm. And then we got the, the event part, which is like three hours long. And then we offer the after party, which is more like the session girls event. So it's kind of like two events in one mm -hmm. because you got the you have the mainstream, you know, six matches, um, yeah. everything you know, everything done, and then you have more the the I don't know the underground or the more movement where you could have you know where you have the session girls and where you can have many sessions, you know, where guys mm -hmm. can challenge the girl to a twenty minute wrestling session. So yeah. you get the best of both worlds. It's almost where mainstream and underground collide, you know? So, you know, and the guys- That's a beautiful that fusion. Yeah, right? So, you know, the guys that know nothing about the session world, but attend the event, they might raise their eyebrow and go, oh, what's going on for the after party? Mm. And then they like go to it and they're, then they're like, wow, this is amazing. I never knew like yeah. anything like this was around or yep. existed. Yeah. You know? So, yep. and I'm not going to try to make session girls mainstream, but what yeah. I'm trying to do is create an event mm -hmm. from the session girls, from the talent of session girls as mainstream. And, and that's, like I said, that to me, that's, that's freaking awesome. It, it is. Um, is there anybody that you haven't had on one of your events yet? that you would really like to bring in for an event? Uh, any any of your any of the girls that you haven't had an opportunity to work with yet, if, as far as like coming into the promotion? Okay, well, le okay, so I'm gonna mention Dominique Danger. She was at the Chicago event, all right? But she mm -hmm. only did the referee, she only wanted to, she didn't want to wrestle. Um, mm -hmm. So she was the referee. But I would love to watch her because she is so talented and has so many years of experience. I would love for her to actually wrestle. So, you know, maybe I can convince her for the next show to to wrestle. But as far as other girls, I would love to see Vivi Lane. I would love to see Ariel X, you know. Oh, wow, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, so, like, I would love to see them, too, you know. And uh, yeah. who else? I'm trying to think. Pretty much any of the girls that wipe the men's butts and even wipes the girls' butts. Um, yeah, Vivi's a monster for being 120 pounds. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, she's I mean, she's a legend in, in the session game. I mean, she really is. Um, and Ariel X, yeah, she's another one. Um, she's like either uh, the you know non-competitive or full competitive. Yeah, the, she's both of them are legit. Like they can roll, and yeah, so that. That, yeah, I can see. I can see bringing those. I'm. I, I'm honestly surprised that um, isn't. I, I don't know where Ariel's located. I just know Vivi's in New York because she advertises on her Instagram and everything all the time. Um, but I, I'm kind of surprised you haven't had Ariel in yet. Um, is she still? Is she's still active on the scene? Obviously, but um, she's active in the scene, but she doesn't do sessions anymore. I know okay. that she had an interest in going to the to the event in Las Vegas because mm -hmm. she's a lot like me. She's in L.A. and in Las Vegas, you know, so we're always back yeah. and forth. Um, yeah. 
So she was going to attend the Las Vegas event, but she wasn't yeah. able to make it because she got caught up at a game or a UFC fight, I believe it was. I, I forget okay. what it was, but she wasn't able to make it. Um, I believe that if she was there and would have seen the event, um, I think she would more, I think she would participate in a future one. You yeah. know what I mean? Because a lot yeah. of the events that have been in the session industry have always been like very small, you know, mm. just throw some just throw some mats on at the ground and and film yep. and film. Yep. And that was an event. But mm -hmm. that's not what well, that's not my kind of event. You, <laughs> Nothing you wrong want with the smaller ones, but I like the production. I love that's it. I love the production value and that's where my yeah. new, new WWE comes in. And what inspired me is like, why can't I build this up and amp it up where we have all the glitz and glamor and everything to go yep. with it. So make it a spectacle, make it a spectacle. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. So, uh, so anyways, I do hope that Ariel X, I can convince her to come mm -hmm. as well to another event and maybe, and participate. Cause I think yeah. she would be great. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, both of them are absolute ass kickers. <laughs> yeah, so you, yeah, that would be that'd be something the cr you know the crowd would love that too because anybody who knows anything about that knows who those two ladies are and and yes. knows that yeah they're both very very legit. Yes. Um, so yeah, that would be uh, that yeah absolutely. I had to ask. I was wondering. I'm like who you know who does who does the queen who would the queen like to bring into the kingdom? You know what I mean? It, it's it is. It's always interesting to hear that perspective when you have a, a, a booker, a promoter that's like, you know, you so you can, you know, you have your, you know, your fantasy booking. It's like, yeah, who would you bring in? So, yeah, those two are very, very good choices. Absolutely. You know what other match I would love to see? Hmm. Is a Jennifer Thomas versus Des Desire pro style match. Okay. Yes. All right. So, yeah, because uh, she's, yeah, she's fully trained uh, in, mm -hmm. in pro style, right? Mm -hmm. I thought even, I thought so. We even did a match with WWE once together, you know. So I just think that would be cool. And plus, we're such close friends. I just think it would yeah. be cool to like do something, to mm -hmm. do something in front of an audience together for once. <laughs> no, maybe not as not maybe not as a main event, but maybe as a semi main, because yeah. Women on Fire is a different style of matches. It's not all competitive, mm -hmm. you know. You yeah. got you got a pro style, you got a fantasy match, and you got competitive. So it's a blend of everything. Mm -hmm. And even MMA, we had an MMA fight uh, for the first time in Chicago, and that was really cool. That was um, was that uh, what's her name? Is it Psych, Psych Mixed Wrestling Psycho? It was it her? Was she involved no, in that? I, I believe God, who was it? It was Brave, Clever Brave, and Lady Justice. They did an MMA style fight together. Okay, okay. You know? So, and I believe they were really going at it. But the thing is, yeah. is when I'm working behind the scenes, I don't get to really watch the matches <laughs> because I'm so busy behind the scenes. So one of these you, days, I hope to be able to sit down and watch my own show. You're not just sitting there in the gorilla position with a headset on, you know, no. Ye yelling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am like running around everywhere. So. Oh, yeah, that was that was me when I was behind the scenes booking. I'd have my notebook, which I still have. It's I, it says the Bible right on the front of it, and I'm I'm running around to all the different guys behind you know because they'd all be backstage working out their matches, and I'm running around giving them times and making changes to stuff. So no, I I understand. Yeah, yes. everybody, it's everybody looks at the wrestling business and just think it's like glitz and glamour from the outside, you know people that don't know and then when you get into it it's like no this is this is work this is a job it's it's dirty but it's rewarding at the end of the day you know if it's if you're doing something you love so and and that comes across in what you're doing and when you talk about it you know I, you have a, you have an exuberance about you while you're talking about it because you can tell this is your baby and you're nurturing it and you're raising it and it's it's really cool to see and and I'm happy to you know like I said just promote in any way I can for you Thank you. Thank you. I mean, my main goal is basically to bring people together and to mm -hmm. showcase something that's different that you haven't seen before. I mean, like if you think about it, if you, if anyone who attended any of the women on fire matches, at least the last two of them, it was almost a combination of like a circus, a nightclub, uh, all in, like all in one, you mm -hmm. know? So it's, a, it's a very unique, it's not something that you just, it's not something that you've really seen before. And, yeah. um, and it's not even like I'm planning that. It just kind of all comes together in its own yeah. way, 
you know, and I, I want to be open minded. I'm like, well, why not have the announcer being on stilts? And, you know, why not have a fire girl? And why not have a little sword fighting going on before the show starts? You know, so That's it's just so cool. like, <laughs> you know, yeah. it's just, you know, offering, like I said, offering something different, bringing people together and letting these women that who I feel are so talented and so amazing that have been kind of hidden in the shadows and 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 bring them to the light i i just see nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that and i feel like that's my new mission i used to be you know wanting to be a superstar with wwe that's not yeah. my goal anymore i've realized that you know it never happened for me but i'm so glad that i pursued it and i put my heart and soul into it because if i didn't mm -hmm. i don't think that i would be doing what i'm doing now so i don't yeah. ever look at wwe as a failure I look at it as as a learning experience and something that I can apply in my life now and in the future. So yeah. my goal is basically to allow other women that I've become close to in this industry become superstars. You know, so that's my goal. And so that is a noble. Happen. <laughs> They're crossed for you yes. always, always. Well, I, I know, like I said, I know you're a crunch for time today, so I, I really appreciate it. And this is where we'll end the recording. Um, go ahead and, and give the folks your website for uh, Women on Fire and everything will be in the description to the video. So I'll let you, uh, I'll, I'll, you know, here's what I'll do. I'll take my ugly mug right off the screen and we'll put you on solo and let you go ahead. Okay. Well, for all you fans out there, if you want to support Women on Fire, just go to waonfire.com. And there you'll see our current roster, at least for the last event. And then when we announce the next event, you'll see new athletes coming up. And you'll also be able to make donations to them. So you could support them to help pay for their travels, to just, just support them in general because they are amazing women and they deserve it. And um, as far as just uh, wanting to sponsor a match, you're able to do that on the website too. So again, that's waonfire.com. Your help is greatly appreciated, and it's what makes the show happen. Well, thank you, and we'll, uh, yeah, that's that. Be sure, folks, uh, if you're if you're able, you know, like I said, sponsor a match, help help Jennifer build this wonderful promotion she's building. This is it is a trust me, as, as somebody who's a fan of this industry, folks, this is. It's like Christmas, seeing stuff like this come to light. And like you said, come out kind of out of hiding and, and, and just be there. Now it exists in the, in the popular zeitgeist, which to me, like I said, I, it's, it's like Christmas. So, yeah, it doesn't get any better than that. Um, Jennifer, thank you again for your time. Folks, you know where to find me. I'm here all the time. Um, I got videos coming out. So... That's it. There you have it, folks. There's another great interview with Jennifer Thomas, the queen of sessions and the founder of Women on Fire Wrestling and SessionGirls.com. If you want to know more, there's the websites right there. They're also in the description to the video. I hope you enjoyed this as much as we did. I'm Etepo Queen of The Place to Be Reviews. I've been here with all of you. If I don't see you, have a great day, a pleasant tomorrow. I will catch you on the next one. Oh, yeah, I almost forgot to tell you. Uh, do you want to send us stuff? Because this is how you send us stuff. We have a P.O. Box now. That's right. P.O. Box 924, Prudenville, Michigan, 48657. If you have anything you'd like to send in to the place to be reviews, that's where it goes, and that's where your packages will be coming from as well when I ship things out to you, my Kazooians. The following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order.
step into the ring in just a moment or two for more exciting fucking action. Get your own. Take that, you bitch! No! What the hell? How'd you like that? Hey, joke's on you, I have hepatitis. <laughs>